Hey, what's up, ladies and gentle tubers? It's Tyler. Welcome back to the Ever Ride Chan Chan. Today, I've got the ultimate excuse for you to get out and ride, set against a backdrop of an amazing day trip through some of the best kept secrets of Southern Utah. So sit back, relax, and prepare for some moto therapy. We often hear the cliche that motorcycling is cheaper than therapy, but is there some truth to this? Does riding a motorcycle actually have some valid wellness benefits? While riding with my good friends Garrett and Craig lately, we've talked about this often. Now before we get into the video, I want to give you some options so that you get the video that best suits you. I'm releasing this video two different ways. This one, then one with behind the scenes commentary about the ride posted for free on my Patreon page, which you can watch by hitting the card in the upper right corner. You can also turn down the volume and play some music and just enjoy the scenery or skip the scenery altogether, hit the gear in the bottom right corner and speed it up just to get the discussion aspect. So however you wanna do it, enjoy. So before we get into the very real benefits of riding, first I want to give a disclaimer. Getting out into nature and spending time with friends and loved ones and other very positive activities certainly can help and are part of a balance which are very beneficial to many people, but let's not mistake activities that are good for us as the only way. Society is riddled with stigmas and falsehoods that undercut a serious need for medication that in many cases saves relationships and even lives. I saw this meme a while ago and just about lost it. Now, I'm not a big fan of Big Pharma, nor do I discount the positive effects of exercising in nature. But for people with serious depression or bipolar disorders or post-traumatic stress disorder and other psychological issues that correlate with self-harm and suicide, to stigmatize the use of psychiatric medications is a slap in the face, and it has to stop. Suicide is one of the leading causes of death in the United States, right up there with cancer and heart disease. I've lost more than my fair share of friends and students to suicide and drug addiction to self-medicate for psychiatric issues. Here's the thing, a physically healthy person doesn't just suddenly die of cancer or heart disease. And likewise, a mentally healthy person doesn't just up and commit suicide or overdose. Psychological diseases are just as deadly as physical diseases, and both require serious treatment. Nobody calls a person weak when they contract cancer or heart disease and get treatment and take medications or receive therapy. But for some reason, the treatment of psychological diseases through medications and therapy and clinical treatment is still stigmatized. It's often said that people who are battling with cancer are heroic and rightfully so. But what do we call people who battle with psychological disorders? Not jobs, Debbie Downers, psychos, weirdos, freaks. What do we call people who fight the battle with mental illness with self-medicated addictions? Junkies, wastes, bums, losers? Now if there were a pill that one could take daily to cure our nation's biggest killers like cancer or heart disease, we would be all over it. But when we actually have medicines that when taken daily adjust chemicals to help psychological diseases, in many cases to a life-saving degree for hundreds of thousands of people, we call that a weakness? Proper medication would drastically improve their quality of life and greatly reduce suicide rates and overdoses. So I urge you right now to stop stigmatizing the use of psychiatric medications. There are different strokes for different folks and many people get by fine with a walk in the woods, but just like a cancer patient, some people need treatment beyond a healthy diet, exercise, walks in nature, and other healthy activities. There is a statistically valid test that I've put in the description called the PHQ-9, and everybody who watches this video should take it. And if you're struggling with depression, anxiety, trauma, or anything else, go have a candid discussion with a qualified doctor, because it can change your life. And I am living proof. For a long time, I believed all the stigmas 
and I lived in a dark place without medications or help because I kept thinking, I'm better than that. I couldn't be one of those people. And yet I was miserable. My grandmother was the same way, and for decades she suffered not only from the darkness of deep depression, but from the guilt and denial and aloneness that she felt by knowing that her mind was not well, and the stigmas that she'd been taught made her feel ashamed of her very treatable problems. Only in her last year alive did a nurse convince her to try antidepressants, and for the first time in perhaps 30 years she was my grandma again. It was after she passed away that I finally admitted that I had a problem and sought help that my life changed for the better. Medication and a bit of therapy, even though embarrassing for a moment, is good for me now and it saved my life, and perhaps from death, but definitely from depression and misery. But that's not to say that medication alone is the only solution. You wouldn't treat aggressive cancer with just a few pills, and you don't treat psychological diseases with nothing but a pill either. Part of this meme is right. This is an antidepressant, and a fine one at that. So, during a recent visit to my therapist, which I'll openly admit I go to, we talked about some of the issues that I was having. My life is amazing, and the logical part of my brain knows it. My wife is all that I can ask for and more. My kids are smart and funny and bring so much joy to my life. I'm working my absolute dream job by riding motorcycles and making films like this. I live in a beautiful home in what I consider to be the dual sport dreamland of Southern Utah. There is absolutely no reason for me to have these crazy depressive mood swings other than the chemicals in my brain going haywire. And I was worried that perhaps my medication was now ineffective. I went into therapy fully expecting a medication change when my therapist actually recommended 420. And not this 420, but rather exercising the four fundamental pillars of wellness. Physical, social, mental, and spiritual for at least 20 minutes a day. He said having something constant during my best days and my worst would even out the highs and lows to keep me more grounded. And at first I scoffed at the idea. That was 80 minutes out of my day that I just don't have, and a lack of time is one of my greatest stressors. But then the good news came. They don't have to be mutually exclusive. So you could potentially knock out two or three or four in the same 20 minute period. And that is where the motorcycling comes in. While I was out riding with my good friends Garrett and Craig, we agreed that motorcycling can satisfy all four aspects of wellness, often in a single ride. The first way that it balances us is quite obviously physical. Some would argue that a motor negates the physicality of riding a motorcycle. And if riding only on the road, they're probably correct, but when you bring the bike off-road, that all changes. Motorcycling combines balance, body positioning, cardio, endurance, and if you ride like I do, a lot of heavy lifting. If you've ridden a motorcycle off-road, you know it can be as much a workout as any other sport or exercise. The second way is social, and this didn't used to be the case, at least not as much as it can be now. Riding was a solo endeavor. Even when riding in a group, you were still isolated in a world of noise and dust inside of your helmet, communicating with friends only when the bikes were stopped. Even then, many great relationships have been forged like this, because nothing brings friends together like slogging 400-pound motorcycles through mud or pushing each other and your bikes through difficult terrain. But riding was still a very individual experience. However, that has all changed with Bluetooth communication headsets. I've said it before and I will say it again, a headset is the best thing to happen to motorcycles since knobby tires. Riding with friends is immensely rewarding. Now there are many models out there and the best model is the one that's compatible with the headsets that your friends might already have. Now this video isn't sponsored but my headset of choice is the Cena 10S and the tried and true SMH10 which is relatively inexpensive, reliable and has outstanding battery life. So check out the links in the description if that interests you. Uh, they've been fantastic headsets and have made riding a whole different experience for me. Because suddenly, I'm not alone in my helmet and riding becomes a team sport against the elements. Camaraderie just comes natural and the added safety of a headset to warn those behind you of obstacles or tell others if you need help or keep the group together is really awesome as well. The social aspect of riding is still my favorite part. I've met so many awesome people and gotten to know them in a way that simply riding together or chatting over a lunch just wouldn't do. You really get to know people when it's you versus the elements, conquering difficult terrain and experiencing beautiful landscapes. 
The next pillar is the mental or intellectual aspect of writing, and it's a bit of a stretch because most of us, including myself, are just slightly more developed than a feces slinging simian. I'm not even sure how one exercises his intellectual muscles outside of academia. My guess is by reading books or listening to lectures, engaging in intellectual discussions, and absorbing meaningful current events, not including sensationalized, emotion-driven tabloid news. Basically, I think we grow intellectually when we're learning new things. So could exploration qualify? What about wrenching? Learning new riding skills. Could intelligent discussion during a ride stretch our cognitive capacity? Again, this is where headsets or even just a pair of headphones can come in handy by listening to podcasts or a lecture or an audiobook or having a discussion with fellow writers. I really have had some of my deepest philosophical, intellectual, and thought-provoking discussions while riding out in nature on a motorcycle. Something about being out there gets the awe and the wonder flowing. And on that note, we get to the one that, to me, is as synonymous to motorcycling as the physical exercise, and that's the spiritual aspect. I believe that riding itself is a form of powerful meditation where we can shift between focus on the macro to focus on the micro with just a twist of the throttle. It also allows us opportunities to explore and ride to areas where we can be very alone in nature for solitude, to pray or meditate or to just think. Whatever you believe about God or creation or nature, there is beauty and awe in the natural world that reminds us that there is power and space, greatness and intelligence beyond ourselves. Spiritual and religious leaders of many faiths and beliefs have drawn spiritual strength in nature. Moses prayed on Mount Sinai. Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha, meditated under a tree in Nepal. Muhammad prayed in a cave outside of Mecca. Jesus the Christ, who I personally believe to be the creator and savior of the world, fasted in the Judean desert. Religious records of all kinds are saturated with prophets, apostles, and spiritual people who found a higher power while out in nature. And countless scientists, artists, and creators have stared in awe and received inspiration from a million starry nights. So whatever our religious views, writing affords us opportunities to meditate, pray, and refuel spiritually, whether stopped or while riding, whether alone or with friends. Likewise, spiritual discussions about the beauty and power of God or nature can fill the spiritual fuel tank, as I've experienced on several occasions with many different writers from many different faiths. I've ridden with Muslims, Jews, Catholics, Protestants, agnostics, and with good people who prefer no religion in their lives at all. And while I'm a Latter-day Saint, in nearly every case we can discuss the common beauties of our beliefs through the lens of nature. And while aspects of each of our faiths may be different, the manifestation of greatness and power and love that we see and feel through the creations that we enjoy while riding fosters a universal spiritual common ground. Now obviously, any of us would be hard pressed to ride every single day to reap the wellness benefits of riding motorcycles as our only avenue for balance. But now you know that riding a motorcycle isn't just a simple pleasure. It has solid therapeutic benefits. And the next time life gets in the way of getting out and riding, remember that you already invest hours to your work. You invest hours for your family and your friends. And once in a while, it's necessary to invest hours for yourself and for your own wellness. And riding a motorcycle in nature really is one of the best resources to improve your overall well-being. That is, unless you crack your sternum in a crash like I did on the ride after this one. In that case, take it easy for a while and find other activities to achieve wellness. So thank you so much for watching, and as always, a huge thanks to my patrons for making cinematic, non-sponsored, from-the-heart videos like this one possible. Be sure to check out the video to the right to see five ways to work less and ride more, and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this, usually released about every weekend. Much love, ladies and gentle tubers. Ever ride out.